friends! Today in the studio we have a really cool little device called the Helium Hotspot. If you're not familiar, Helium's been around for a little while as a wireless communication company for IoT, and basically they're encouraging people to propagate the network using blockchain. It doesn't like really run on this, but this is like a way for people to create value for themselves and their neighbors, and at the same time grow the network, which is a pretty cool model. So we're going to take a look at this guy. Um, as you can see, we've got these little status LEDs, and right now this shows that we are not connected. You can see that there's a little GPS unit in there, and this model has some cellular as well, but the uh, actual consumer units are going to have Wi-Fi and Ethernet access. We're going to take a quick look at the setup process, and then we're going to hear a little bit more about it from Coco Tang, who's a part of the Helium team. And to that end, I've downloaded the Helium app. So you can read more about this on helium.com. This is also where you would create an account, but I'm going to do it through the app. Alright, so I've loaded this up on my phone. It says, Welcome to Helium. Create an account. Ooh, interesting. Create a passphrase using 12 words in the order they are shown. That's really cool! So if you've done anything with cryptocurrency before, you know what a tragedy is to lose access to your wallet. And what happens here is that you're mining atoms, which are essentially the tokens of this currency. By having a hotspot on the network, that's how you generate atoms in your account, which you can exchange with other users. So you need to make sure that you remember these words in order and definitely do not lose it or else you will lose all of your atoms and access to your account. And I'm having to select the first, second, and third words from the passphrase on my phone now so that it knows I'm the same person as I was three minutes ago. It says, you're all set. You've confirmed your passphrase. Please remember to keep it safe. Now let's secure your new account on this phone with a pin code. I love how much security there is on this. It's a six digit pin as well. Okay, cool. So now we're gonna set up the hotspot. Hotspots are physical miners that earn rewards and create network coverage. I would totally love to set this up now. So Coco is gonna send me some atoms so that I can complete this flow right now. It's gonna be super cool. Welcome to your account. And I'm gonna hit receive atom. That's right. Cool. So with the QR code, I'm just going to scan it. I'm going to confirm. So uh, you should be good to go. So you can enter the registration flow. Set up a hotspot. Find the ideal spot for your hotspot. I think right here is great. I need power. Well, it has power and it's got a couple of status lights on showing that it's not connected to anything. So that sounds good. Pair with me. Once the LED ring lights up, the hotspot is ready to pair. Push the button on the side of the hotspot, and we have the blue light. Awesome. So it's got this little thing that I assume is based on its MAC address. Cool. So I'm going to pick our Hackster Things network and put in the password. And I have currently 0 0.0000003 atoms. So it looks like you don't have any atoms available right now. Um, what we are waiting for is actually the, the payment transfer that I just gave you uh, 20 seconds ago for that to be added to a block on the blockchain. So you can see on mine that it's pending. So it still hasn't gone through. So that's why you're not able to add your hotspot yet. But if we look at the block explorer, we can see that we're just filling a block right now. That's really cool. So you explained earlier that, well, A, hotspots are always mining, and that's how you get more atoms, right? Like, if you have a hotspot, you automatically mine atoms. But also the way that they're generated is really interesting. Yeah, so there's several ways for you to earn rewards, um, and one of them is by creating what we call a challenge. So I live a couple of blocks down, and I have a hotspot in my house too, so a challenge can be initiated um, by anybody in the world. It's initiated over the internet, and what it'll do, it'll pick a target, so let's say it's going to pick me, uh -huh. um, and it's going to construct a path of nearby hotspots. So um, when it sends it to the first hotspot, um, it'll be in the general vicinity, and using radio frequency RF, it's going to send this packet that only the next hotspot can unpack. Huh. Um, so with that comes a lot of security, and it, it also helps us prove that each hotspot is where they say they are, hmm. according to their GPS location. So you can't just like spoof the GPS and like pretend like it's somewhere else, because it'll no. touch that. So you can't just spin up a miner on AWS and hope cool. that you'll earn tokens. It, it doesn't work like that. So this is why our consensus algorithm is so valuable, is because we're able to prove that these hotspots are creating coverage in the geography that they claim to be. No wonder so you all have all those people using you already. That's right. So eventually, your hotspot may challenge my hotspot mm -hmm. uh, because we're very close to each other. 
And then because you've passed on that uh, packet, the challenge, you earn tokens as well. That's very cool. And that means that it's not using like power hungry and sort of resource expensive computation in order to generate the tokens, it's using these radio exchanges. Exactly. So it's so. unlike Bitcoin, you're not using, you know, thousands of dollars of electricity a year. We are probably on par with an LED light bulb in terms of well. electricity use. So it, le it says that my transfer has went through, so you should be able to... Oh, hey, yeah, it says five atom available. You can uh, uh, hit add hotspot. This is saying that the fee is 0 0.0 whatever, three, and then... That's right. Ah, cool. So it's going to tell me about what atoms are, and going to enable the status lights. Cool. You can turn it off. Oh, to save energy or something? Um... A lot or, of people find that it's too bright. Let's say they're in a studio apartment oh. and it's next to their bed. So what are atoms? We talked about that. Verifying hotspot also talked about that. Ooh, what's this about the score? So this is kind of like your reputation. So the more other people can verify you, the, the better your score is. Um, because you've proved that you do exist cool. and that you are creating coverage. So higher scores means you're more likely picked to join a mining group. So um, you can join mining groups every 30 blocks, and every 30 blocks a new set of hotspots are picked to join, huh. um, and they get a larger amount of rewards than yeah. just passing on proof of coverage. So you can earn atoms by joining consensus groups, mm. um, and joining consensus groups depends on your score. The higher your score, the more likely you're able to join. But you can also earn atoms by proving other people are where they are or by sending along that um, proof of coverage uh, packet. Cool, so it's all kind of reputation based. Yes. Awesome. Scores in mining. Oh, this is the score that you're talking about. That's right. Neat. So if you live in a sort of lonely spot and you recruit your friends to go, then you'll all get kind of a better score. That's right. So the the more hotspots that are near you, the easier the, the path can be created. Mm -hmm. um, so you can all just prove each other exists in real, in real time. Cool. Strong bronze griffin. That's so what great. we've got here is um, a, a pending hotspot. So this is your hotspot's given name. It's a pseudo anonymous name given to every hotspot so that they can be identified on the blockchain. I but love you can that. still stay anonymous, which is kind of fun. It's so mythological and kind of badass. It's a badass hotspot. <laughs> <laughs> now these the status LED here is turned green. Yeah, so green means your hotspot is online and connected on Wi-Fi. Nice. So um, the there's a little yellow light here. That's our GPS light. It just means mm. that it hasn't been able to get a lock yet. Mm. Usually that just takes a little bit of time. Cool. So what's the deal with the little 50 star over here? Uh, that is your score. Okay, so that's going to go up if there's other ones nearby and they kind of confirm each other? Yes. Cool. Oh, hey! And then on this screen there's a sort of explainer for all the different status lights. So I think it's found where we are. Oh! So we are now on Howard Street. So if that if you're happy with that, you can hit confirm. So that tells the, the blockchain where you are um, in real life so that when people do challenge you, they know... I love this challenging idea. It sounds like are. we're dueling Pokemon or something. We don't yeah. want blockchain to be stuffy and uptight. And I love we that. We just want it to be a little bit more fun and engaging because we want folks to put these in their homes and they, they should Yeah, I want a should be griffin in my home. That's really cool. So it's just going to update the hotspot location. It's submitting the transaction to the blockchain. That's why it looks like right. it's still rolling along. Can I exit out of you this? You can exit and out, yeah. Uh, and then we'll like look at the... Yeah, so we're just pending the hotspot confirmation, Neat. and it looks like you're receiving atoms. Nice. So your hotspot is doing work. So here we have hotspots all around San Francisco. We've got a ton in the office. We've got some in the marina, um, in Laurel Heights, in the Castro. You've been busy. We've got some in the North Bay. Let's zoom out. Here we are, some in the East Bay. Down in the peninsula, we've got some, and we were in Austin earlier this week, so we've got some coverage over there as well. Cool. So here we are in Austin, Texas. So we've just been dropping these off and, and doing testing and creating coverage um, at some of our partners and friends and family. All over the place. Wow. All over the place. And what's the range on these? Um, so in San Francisco, we've been getting pretty good coverage um, with about 8 to 10 hotspots. 
Um, we expect the range to be about um, just two miles in very dense urban areas. Right. And even, even more. Even though, compared to traditional wireless type. That's right. It's meant to be a low power, long range network. Super cool. Um, and it's... And it can go even farther in uh, very clear open fields. Awesome. Very flat lands. Um, we should keep in mind that buildings are, um, and, and basic terrain could block radio signals, and that's why we are very conservative on our urban estimates. Right. Um, and we can be a little bit more liberal and relaxed in um, agricultural um, applications. Makes sense. So, like, if you had a herd of cows versus, like, trying... In San Francisco, where it's, like, all... Big metal buildings and yeah. then huge hills. <laughs> a lot of interference, a lot yeah. of things in the way. Yeah. So what's the deal with these two antennas on here? So those two are our sub gigahertz antennas. They are um, for the 900 to 915 megahertz band. Um, mm -hmm. They're the radio frequency that we use um, to verify other hotspots exist. Oh, and it's cool. also for eventually um, IoT devices that use our network to um, communicate on. So they um, so little things like a dog tracker would have um, a helium radio on board uh -huh. that would also communicate on the 900 megahertz spectrum, and uh, it would just send radio over to and those antennas would pick it up. Awesome. And there's I see a little micro SD card in there, which you told me is for storage, right? Yeah, that's just to store um, the blockchain. Um, so the hotspot. Contains the full blockchain for now. Um, when it gets to your bay, we'll just store a portion, maybe the last thousand blocks or something like hmm. that. Block oh, is that my like Adam's balance? Yeah. Cool. So we're on block 3883, and oh. so am I. Filling block 3884. And how frequently does that does a block fill? What does it depend on? It's about 30 seconds. Oh, wow. Cool. It's already got a ton of... This is the history of the blockchain. So it's got everyone's history. Oh, okay, even though like I just joined. Aha! Yes, I have 12! Oh, I feel so rich already. I only sent Alex 5 in the beginning, so she's earned the rest 7.2 all on her own. This is great. I feel productive, even though I'm just standing here, and it's doing all the work. <laughs> We call it engagement. Oh yeah, great. <laughs> so if I want to send you those five atoms back, yeah. I hit send atom, let's say five, confirm amount, and then two, I assume, yeah, okay, so I do this, and now I can scan your QR code. Cool. Uh, confirm amount again, and there's a tiny fee on the, oh, that's going to break my bank. Oh, I can't believe you're so... There's greedy. so many zeros so behind that. that <laughs> cool, so I'm sending them back. Nice. So those are pending too. So, so I still have 12 until like that. Until it clears. Mm. Yeah. And then you can see on mine that I have a pending five atoms oh, from cool. Alex as well. So you already get the notification that's receiving even before it's sort of mined that whole block. Yeah, it's just to, cool. to let you know that things did work and that mm -hmm. you were just waiting. That's nice. You can see the block is sort of filling up. It's almost at a full square. Before it was like an empty square. Oh! This stuff, like the design and everything, it's super slick and it kind of feels like a game. So our designer, A, would love that and our CEO would also love that. Oh, great. <laughs> we want it to be, like, like he it. wants it to be like a Tamagotchi where you have to feed your hotspot and take care of it and play with it. Toggle between 24 hour view, 7 days, 30 days and stuff, depending on how much of a nerd you want to be about it. I think mine might be more interesting because I've, cool, yeah. I've had it for longer than 30 minutes. <laughs> my seven day looks like, you know, I started with zero oh, and then yeah, I started gaining. And then 30 days, well, I haven't had this open for 30 days, so it's not as yeah. interesting. Oh, I already have 87 score. So if you want to get on the wait list to get one of these, you can sign up at helium.com slash waitlist and that will get you in line. Make sure that you read the, <laughs> the small print over here. And of course, based on the fact that radio frequency regulations differ between different geographic locations, it may or may not end up being available in your area. However, you should still check it out because the more you show interest, the more likely you are to influence the direction that it goes. That's right. Cool. <laughs> Can I rename my hotspot? You cannot. That's fine, I like this name. What is your name? Strong Bronze Griffin. Oh, I like that. Yeah, it's pretty good. I've got two hotspots. What are you One of them is Shallow Cornflower Trout. Oh, whoa. And the other one is Lone Peanut Turtle. <laughs> That's pretty great. So. Those are very memorable, for sure. Like, you're not going to be like, is that mine or is that... I mean, eventually you start recognizing your hotspot names. Yeah. And you'll see it in, in consensus groups. So... 
um, on our blockchain obviously is a public blockchain um, and in the consensus group you'll be able to see which hotspots were picked mm. and we use a hotspot name so we don't have any personal identifying details so that's why the hotspot oh, name is cool. important so I'm still curious about these consensus groups so you're sort of randomly picked but it's Partly based on your sort of reputation points. Your score, yeah. Your so score. the higher your score, the more um, trustworthy you are. Oh, because okay. we only want trustworthy hotspots to help mine and determine which transactions go on a block. We don't oh, want any no. untrustworthy bad actors. So people can't like just like say. join, like have like 10 machines join and sort of swarm the network and try to like capture like a, the... Yeah, so we, we try to, that's one way for us to help avoid that. That's really cool. Consensus groups. Consensus groups. So uh, if you're chosen for one, that means that you get higher rewards? Yeah, so you'll mine 30 blocks, uh -huh. um, and in each block there's a um, certain allocation of atoms that go to different people. So mm. um, some percentage of the rewards per block will go to the consensus group for their work. Um, for mining a block. Hmm. Some percentage will go to those verifying other hotspots. Some percentage will go to those passing along that verification to the target hotspot. Um, some amount will be given to, um, I guess, witnesses. So let's <gasps> say a packet flew by you, but it wasn't supposed to go to you, but you saw it. Yeah. Um, so you can be a witness, and you can earn some rewards for that, what? too. What? I'm picturing Super Mad Max, like, witness me! <laughs> Sorry. Every block, there's just a set number of rewards, and they just get reallocated. So mm. when you're part of a consensus group, you get a bigger part of the reward. That's cool. And so presumably, like, you're in one for 30 blocks, and then you leave, and then later on you might get selected again? That's right, oh. yeah. And every 30 minutes, you're able to sort of challenge any hotspot on the network. Uh-huh. Um, and your hotspot would just do that um, so programmatically. Cool. So just 30 minutes is up. I'm going to challenge, you know, Emily's hotspot. Um, and then <laughs> just, just make sure she hasn't moved it, like... Well, if she moves it and, and she doesn't receive that ending packet, uh -huh. her score will actually decrease. So It's what all if... about creating that valid mm. coverage network. So if I, for example, wanted to take it on a road trip with me so that I had, like, sensors with me, and I had it like hooked up to the Wi-Fi via my phone hotspot or something so that I could have my mobile like IoT network, right? Mm -hmm. um, would I lose score for taking it with me? No, so what you would do is you would pair with it again and mm -hmm. then confirm location like you did um, earlier today. Okay, and then so like every once in a while I would just like reconfirm wherever, like if I were Yeah, if traveling. you keep moving it, yeah. Uh -huh. So ah, you would cool. create a network wherever you are, mm -hmm. you would just update the location, there would be like a very, very, very very small fee, uh -huh. nominal fee that you saw. On yeah, that. like seven zeros. Exactly. Um, so every time you move, you just do that and you just take it with you, create a, a network. And that way are. I don't lose my score. Yeah. Cool. So I love the idea of bringing this to like a like EMF camp or something, like an event where everyone's out in a field and you can just like have your, you know, because this would definitely co cover a whole field of people. Definitely. That'd yeah. be so cool. There's a lot of use cases for it. Thank you so much. Absolutely. So, looks like it scales to thousands. With a single hotspot, that's ridiculous. You can, like, talk to mil uh, thousands of sensors. Uh, to stay tuned about this, be sure to sign up for the waitlist, like we mentioned before. Yeah, so let's, uh, in the next video, we'll talk about the different use cases mm. that um, we've had folks dream about for the hotspot and how flexible it can be in a lot of different verticals. So that's going to be really exciting. Cool, yeah, I'm, I'm stoked. This is really cool. Thank yeah, you. Thank you, Alex.